Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to your daily dose of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Today, we're going to be in paragraph five, heaven and earth. And remember that you can go look at a free digital copy of the Catechism at the Vatican website. Also, if you would like to join us to pray the rosary, you're welcome to go to the description box below. There are links to our Zoom calendar. We pray the rosary at this point, Monday through Thursday, live on Zoom, and on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Monday through Thursday is actually 6 a.m. Mountain Time. Wednesdays are also, again, at 6 p.m., and we're hoping to increase live rosary prayers via Zoom link. So feel free, no matter where you are around the earth, if you want to pray the rosary with us, Click the link in the description box below and join in at that time. Here we go. Paragraph 5, Heaven and Earth. This is article uh, in Article 1 of Chapter 1 of Section 2 of Part 1 of the Catechism. Paragraph 5, Heaven and Earth. The Apostles' Creed professes that God is creator of heaven and earth. The Nicene Creed makes it explicit that this profession includes all that is seen and unseen. The scriptural expression heaven and earth means all that exists, creation in its entirety. It also indicates the bond deep within creation that both unites heaven and earth and distinguishes the one from the other. The earth is the world of men, while heaven, or the heavens, can designate both the firmament and God's own place our Father in heaven, and consequently the heaven to which is eschatological glory. Finally, heaven refers to the saints and the place of the spiritual creatures, the angels who surround God. The profession of faith of the Fourth Lateran Council from 1215 affirms that God, from the beginning of time, made at once out of nothing both orders of creatures, the spiritual and the corporal, that is, the angelic and the earthly, and then the human creature who, as it were, shares in both orders, being composed of both spirit and body. The angels, the existence of angels, a truth of faith. The existence of the spiritual non-corporal beings that sacred scripture usually calls angels is a truth of faith. The witness of scripture is as clear as the entirety of tradition. Who are they? St. Augustine says, Angel is the name of their office, not of their nature. If you seek the name of their nature, it is spirit. If you seek the name of their office, it is angel. From what they are, spirit. From what they do, angel. With their whole beings, the angels are servants and messengers of God. Because they always Behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. They are the mighty ones who do his word, hearkening to the voice of his word. As purely spiritual creatures, angels have intelligence and will. They are personal and immortal creatures, surpassing in perfection all visible creatures as the splendor of their glory bears witness. Christ with all his angels. Christ is the center of the angelic world. They are his angels. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, they belong to him because they were created through and for him. For in him all things were created both in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether their thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. They belong to him still more because he has made them messengers of his saving plan. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to serve for the sake of those who are to obtain salvation? Angels have been present since creation and throughout the history of salvation, announcing this salvation from afar or near and serving the accomplishments of the divine plan. They closed the earthly paradise, protected Lot, saved Hagar and her child, stayed Abraham's hand, communicated the law by their ministry, led the people of God, announced births and callings, and assisted the prophets just to cite a few examples. Finally, the angel Gabriel announced the birth of the precursor and that of Jesus himself. From the Incarnation to the Ascension 
The life of the Word incarnate is surrounded by the adoration and service of angels. When God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Their song of praise at the birth of Christ has not ceased resounding in the church's praise. Glory to God in the highest. They protect Jesus in infancy, serve him in the desert, strengthen him in his agony in the garden. And again, it is the angels who evangelize by proclaiming the good news of Christ's incarnation and resurrection. And they will also be present at Christ's return, which they will announce as their service at judgment time. The Angels in the Life of the Church In the meantime, the whole life of the church benefits from the mysterious and powerful help of angels. In her liturgy, the church joins with the angels to adore the thrice holy God. She invokes their assistance in the Roman canons Supplicis Te Rogamus, Almighty God, we pray that your angel. In the funeral liturgies, in Paradisum Deductum Te Angeli, may the angels lead you into paradise. Moreover, in the, in the cherubic hymn of the Byzantine liturgy, she celebrates the memory of certain angels more particularly, St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and the guardian angels. From infancy to death, human life is surrounded by angels' watchful care and intercession. Beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd leading him to life. Already here on earth, the Christian life shares by faith in the blessed company of angels and men united in God. The Visible World God himself created the visible world in all its richness, diversity, and order. Scripture presents the work of the Creator symbolically as a succession of six days of divine work concluded by the rest of the seventh day. On the subject of creation, the sacred text teaches the truths revealed by God for our salvation, permitting us to recognize the inner nature, the value, and the ordering of the whole of creation to the praise of God. Nothing exists that does not owe its existence to God the Creator. The world began when God's word drew it out of nothingness. All ex existent beings, all of nature, and all of human history are rooted in the primordial event, the very genesis by which the world was constituted and time begun. Each creature possesses its own particular goodness and perfection. For each one of God's work, work, works of the six days, it is said, and God saw that it was good. By the very nature of creation, material being is endowed with its own stability, truth, and excellence, its own order and laws. Each of the various creatures willed in its own being reflects in its own way a ray of God's infinite wisdom and goodness. Man must therefore respect the particular goodness of every creature to avoid any disordered use of the things which would be in contempt of the Creator and would bring disastrous consequences for human beings and their environment. God wills the interdependence of creatures, the sun and the moon, the cedar and the little flower, the eagle and the sparrow. The spectacle of their countless diversities and inequalities tells us that no creature is self-sufficient. Creatures exist only in dependence on each other to complete each other in the service of each other. The beauty of the universe, the order and harmony of the created world results from the diversity of beings and from the relationship which exists among them. Man discovers them progressively as the laws of nature. They call forth the admiration of scholars. The beauty of creation reflects the infinite beauty of the Creator and ought to inspire the respect and submission of man's intellect and will. The hierarchy of creatures is expressed by the order of the six days, from the less perfect to the more perfect. God loves all of His creatures and takes care of each one, even the sparrow. Nevertheless, Jesus said, You are of more value than many sparrow, or again, how much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Man is the summit, the summit of the Creator's work, as the inspired account expresses by clearly distinguishing the creation of man from the creation of other creatures. There is a solidarity among all creatures arising from the fact that they all have the same Creator and are all ordered to His glory. 
May you be praised, O Lord, in all your creatures, especially Brother Son, by whom you give us light for the day. He is beautiful, radiating great splendor and offering us a symbol of you, the Most High. May you be praised, my Lord, for Sister Water, who is very useful and humble, precious and chaste. May you be praised, my Lord, for Sister Earth, our mother, who bears and feeds us and produces the variety of fruits and dappled flowers and grasses. Praise and bless my Lord, give thanks and serve him in all humility. The Sabbath, the end of the work of the six days, the sacred text says that on the seventh day, God finished his work, which he had done, that the heavens and the earth were finished and that God rested on this day and sanctified and blessed it. These inspired words are rich in profitable instruction. In creation, God laid a foundation and established laws that remain firm, on which the believer can rely with confidence, for they are the sign and pledge of the unshakable faithfulness of God's covenant. For his part, man must remain faithful to this foundation and respect the laws which the Creator has written into it. Creation was fashioned with a view to the Sabbath, and therefore for the worship and adoration of God. Worship is inscribed in the order of creation. As the rule of St. Benedict says, nothing should take precedence over the work of God, that is, solemn worship. This indicates the right order of human concerns. The Sabbath is at the heart of Israel's law. To keep the commandments is to correspond to the wisdom and the will of God as expressed in His work of creation. The eighth day. But for us, a new day has dawned, the day of Christ's resurrection. The seventh day completes the first creation. The eighth day begins the new creation. Thus, the work of creation culminates in the greater work of redemption. The first creation finds its meaning and its summit in the new creation in Christ, the splendor of which surpasses that of the first creation. In brief or in summary, time to sum it all up. In brief, 350, angels are spiritual creatures who glorify God without ceasing and who serve his saving plans for other creatures. The angels work together for the benefit of us all. The angels surround Christ their Lord. They serve him especially in the accomplishments of his saving mission to men. In brief, 352, the church venerates the angels who help her on her earthly pilgrimage and protect every human being. In brief, 353, God willed the diversity of his creatures and their own particular goodness, their interdependence, and their order. He destined all material creatures for the good of the human race, and through him all creation is destined for the glory of God. In brief, 354, respect for laws inscribed in creation and the relations which derive from the nature of things is a principle of wisdom and a foundation for morality. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed a little bit brief today, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, Heaven and Earth. Uh, Keep us in prayer. Our desire is to have the Rosary live on Zoom 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Well, actually every three hours at midnight, 3 a.m., 6, 9, noon, 3, 6, 9. And we also want to have live worship music in between. So keep that in prayer in your intentions. Once again, you can pray the rosary with us live. Uh, Click in the Zoom links calendar below in the description box. We will see you tomorrow morning. God bless.